It's the end of an era. It's time to sell the Kia Rio and get a dad car. So with our baby coming in two weeks, we decided it's time to get rid of the Kia Rio because, well, it's probably not the big this car to have for a baby. We could barely get in the car seat in the back, so we decided it's time to upgrade to a dad car and get a station wagon. How do you feel about that? I don't know. <laughs> the ironic thing here is that usually it's the guys who want like the fancy cars, but I'm okay with getting, you know, the very boring dad car. But Vera's the one who kind of wants like an SUV or electric car or something <laughs> fancy. I think we got used to our nice car in Canada because we had a Hyundai Aww. Tucson. <laughs> But I'm okay with getting the dad car. I fully accept my identity. I'm becoming a dad. Oh yeah. That's right, we didn't betray the Kia family. We just upgraded from the Kia Rio to the Kia Seed. All right, it's pretty windy outside, so let me just jump in the car and tell you more about this car. So this is the Kia Seed 2020 model. This had about 23,000 kilometers, so you know those first most expensive kilometers have been driven off. And um, really, our criteria for a new car was it's gotta be A, bigger, because we're having a baby. In the Kia Rio, we could barely fit the car seat in the back. You had to have the, the passenger front shotgun seat like really far up with your legs cramped up, so that didn't really work. So we wanted a car with space, and then the Kia Rio in the past didn't have cruise control. So I thought it would be nice to have cruise control. Okay, well, we got those features in this Kia Seed, but we do have some more because not only do we have cruise control, also we have steering wheel warmer, butt warmers, which when you live in a cold Nordic country, it's minus 20 degrees out, you want that. As well, we have the engine heater and we have this like heater at the feet. So that just keeps a nice, you know, basic temperature in the car so it's not just absolutely freezing, which is great when you have a baby kid coming on the way, you probably don't want to put them in a freezing cold car. But yeah, really blessed to have this new car, so thankful for it. It's really the end of an era with the Kia Rio. We had a lot of great road trips with it, but now we're gonna have a lot of great new memories with the Kia Seed. I still gotta come up with a name for it, so if you have any suggestions, comment down below. My new favorite Red Bull flavor, this is the apricot strawberry. Mm. So while we're on the topic of ending an era, something that I've been thinking a lot about recently is my YouTube channel and YouTube channels in general. And I've been wondering this question that do YouTube channels have to go on forever or should they end at some point just like TV shows, you know? Usually a TV show would run a few seasons and then it comes to an end. And if it doesn't end and it just keeps dragging on, usually the TV show kind of loses its plot, goes off into the wrong direction, and then eventually will lose its popularity. Like the show Lost or Suits. It was great for the first few seasons, but then over time it lost its plot and it just wasn't as popular anymore. Now don't get worried, I'm not planning to end my YouTube channel anytime soon. But I have been thinking about this for my future self and for anyone who wants to start a YouTube channel in the future. Personally, I feel like a lot of people never start a YouTube channel because they feel like they need to do it forever. And there comes this pressure with that, this feeling that, okay, I need to be really passionate about the topic that I start my channel on because I'm gonna be doing this for a long time or forever. With that kind of mentality, there comes a lot of pressure and I think that's why many people never start their YouTube channel. And the more I think about this topic, the more I come to the conclusion that you don't need to run your YouTube channel forever. In fact, you could do literally multiple YouTube channels in your lifetime because you as a person are going to change and as you change, so will your passions and your priorities, meaning your original YouTube channel might not be relevant for the life season that you're in right now. For example, right now I'm 32 years old and my channel Tempo Hapoya is mostly about photography, filmmaking, content creation, lifestyle here in Finland. 
But maybe when I'm 40 years old, I'm actually really passionate about finances and investing and potentially I could start a YouTube channel on that. Or maybe when I'm 50 years old, I get really into the outdoor lifestyle and I just want to inspire people to go outside, enjoy the nature and I'll start a YouTube channel on that. Already in a few decades, I could start multiple YouTube channels that could become successful. Like I said earlier, it's natural that as you grow up and as you change, so will your passions and your priorities. So most likely the topic that you originally chose for YouTube channel won't last forever and you would need to start a new YouTube channel. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't stress too much. If you want to become a YouTube content creator, whatever you're passionate about right now, start a channel on that and see where the road takes you. Maybe you'll run that YouTube channel for five years, 10 years, and then you'll get a new passion. You'll start a new channel and you'll build that channel, but at least you started and you went from A and you let the journey continue to B and C and D. Whereas if you just never start, you'll never be able to see where that road will take you. Personally, I'm so glad that I started this YouTube channel back in 2018 because I would not have been able to meet so many of the amazing people a part of this community or travel and experience all these things that I've gotten to experience if I never started this YouTube channel. And in the end, I really don't know where this is gonna lead me, but I'm glad that I've started and I'm enjoying the road that it's taking me on. Now, instead of starting multiple YouTube channels throughout your lifetime, could you just transition your YouTube channel into a new niche or passion? And I would say yes and no. I think if you start with one niche and slowly start adding new passions or a new niche into your channel, it could work, but you gotta do it by slowly introducing it and always tying it into your original niche. For example, if I was to all of a sudden start creating finance videos, I don't know where, I think a lot of people would be kind of frustrated because they're expecting, you know, photography, filmmaking, content creation style videos, and all of a sudden I'm talking about finances. Whereas if I did a video about finances and tied it into content creation or being a creative business owner, then it would feel a lot more appropriate and natural and beneficial for the original audience. You get what I mean? You gotta figure out how does this new niche or passion tie in with the original audience and would it be beneficial to them or not? So if you wanna include new passions into your original niche, try to figure out how you could naturally and organically incorporate them into your original niche. And remember to do it slowly. It takes time to introduce those new passions to your YouTube channel. I think the biggest mistake a YouTube content creator could do is just do a hard stop change. For example, if I was to do this photography filmmaking YouTube channel and the next day all of a sudden I'm making cooking videos on this channel. I think my audience would be really frustrated and just annoyed because they're expecting a certain topic or reason why they're coming to YouTube channel and then all of a sudden it's changed. It'd be like watching your favorite action TV series and then all of a sudden it turned to rom-com. It just doesn't work and you'd be upset with the original TV show. If you find that you're really not passionate about your old niche and you wanna start a new channel about a new niche, then just start a whole new YouTube channel rather than doing this hard stop change. Or do a transitional period where you keep running your old YouTube channel and build the new YouTube channel and once you feel comfortable going full time with your YouTube channel, then you can stop the old one and continue the new one. So is Tepo Apoya as a YouTube channel ending? Not in the foreseeable future. Will it end someday? Yes, most likely. Why you ask? Well, to start a new epic channel about some new passion that I might have in the future. All right, hopefully this was helpful for someone. If you are on the fence, you wanna become a YouTube content creator, but you've just been stressing about choosing which niche to do, I would just say start. The best thing is to start, start creating videos, and you're gonna learn more about content creation, and then you can figure out, do you wanna start a new YouTube channel, maybe about a niche that you actually are more passionate about? But I think the most important thing is just to start, because that is the number one reason why people don't become YouTube content creators. They just don't ever start. They talk a lot about it, but there's no action behind their talk. Oh, and by the way, hopefully the title didn't give a heart attack to anyone. I'm sorry, I had to clickbait it. I just had to. All right, guys, thank you for being here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Comment below, what do you guys think about this topic? Is this a reason why you haven't started a YouTube channel? And what do you think about starting multiple channels at the same time or changing your YouTube channel over time? I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. It's always cool to interact with you guys, the audience, the community. You guys are the best. Have a great day. I'm rambling. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.